Hello, classes and class names in Godot are so powerful. I mean, really, when using classes, we can make our code much more reliable, accessible, and more organized. And in this video, I will explain everything there is to know about classes and class names in Godot as we walk through three example scenes that I created for this video. In example one, we will cover a deeper explanation into classes and class names and go over the very basics of how to implement them. In example two, we will create a player class name and learn how to interact with the player class within a level scene. And in example three, we will learn about inner classes how to create them and what they're used for. But quickly, before we get started, if you could please subscribe and drop a like to help YouTube push this tutorial on classes to more aspiring game developers so that they can also learn to make their own Godot games as well, then it would mean the absolute world. Okay, so a quick explanation of classes is, for example, let's take the character body 2D node, and then let's add a script. Well, you can see that it says this script extends from a character body 2D, and that is because it extends from that node, but that node extends from the character body 2D class. What does that class do? Well, it defines all of these properties. It also defines the special functionality that the character body 2D has and what allows it to be different from every other node in Godot. But if we create a class name inside of this script, under what it already extends, and we name it something like maybe the player, then we can define this script and node within a custom player class as well. You can kind of see how this is easily going to end up allowing us to access this script from other areas and keep track of what belongs where and just keep our projects more organized in general, which I will be sure to explain more in depth later in this video. Now, one more thing before we get into example two, where we're actually going to play with classes and learn how they work, is I want to hopefully explain it in a more simple, easy to understand way. And this is a saying that many developers like to say, but it is to think of classes as a blueprint. And really, this is a good way to think about it. For example, if we wanted to create a blueprint of a water bottle, well, the blueprint would include the dimensions or fill level, but the type of liquid can be controlled from outside of this blueprint. And really, that is a simple explanation of how classes work. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense. But let's just get into the real examples because this is where we will be able to learn the most. Okay, so this is our game. As you can see in our 2D scene, we have a little island and we have a background, which is these three icons create the island. We have a collision shape and we have the background. This tile map does absolutely nothing. Don't know why it's in the game, but we have player and sprite 2D collision shape. And this is our player script. As you can see, there is nothing about any class names. There's nothing in this game that even involves class names. But if we go to our world and we click play, the only thing we have is some movement and some collisions. So how are we going to add class names and how are we going to make it work within this game? Well, if we go up to our player, just like in example one that we talked about, we can go class name. And we can make the class name player here in the character. And well, we can see that this is the rest of our script, but none of anything is going to end up happening in this script. So if we go to our world, click on the world and we click on a new scene, we create a new world.gd. We'll keep this process function here, but at the top, we want to create a variable. We can name this variable as our player and we can say this is, or, or I guess, player and this player can be equal to our player dot new right so we can instance a version of our player class within our node 2d within our world script and in process we can do different things like i don't know for example we can print the player's speed whatever the player's speed is equal to in our player well if we click play you can see that we get that variable we pull it out of our player Maybe we want to do something else. Maybe we want to end up, I don't know, calling a function. We can say player dot take damage and we will end up calling that function. And obviously we have nothing to show that we are calling that function. So maybe if we go to the player, we come to the take damage function we can print health just so we can see a change in the health and we go back to the world. Well, you can see that that function is actually being called, right? So if we go in here and we just completely remove that for now we go back to the world you can kind of see that that is how that is going on or maybe we want to say if input uh don't know why i can't spell if input dot is action just pressed ui accept then we want to call the player scene and we want to call the take damage right so if we are in the world we're running around we click enter you can see that we're going to take damage down in the output way down here right every time we click enter and that is all being controlled through the player class that is all being controlled through the world scene none of this is being being controlled through the player scene so that is pretty valuable right that is very very basic obviously of classes but this is how you kind of create a class name and this is how you're going to go into another script another scene completely different and access that information and you can kind of see that the player is here in the game, 
but we don't need the player here for this to work for this to be able to access the player's information so of course in our character body 2d this is all part of the character body 2d class right so this is part of the collision object 2d class i just want to go over this a little bit more this stuff is part of the node 2d class this is part of the canvas item class this is part of just the node class but this is up here is what is special about the character body 2d class right so the flooring the moving platform the collision that is just specific to the character body 2d and a example of how to create very basic versions of the class i want to go over how to create inner classes because that's more of how a class works and i want to explain what they could be used for how we could use them in a game and basically how to make them but it's going to be a more advanced piece of code than what this is right here okay so for an inner class i'm going to go and i'm just going to completely remove everything here except for our process function this process function we can keep and we can remove the player because we're not going to need that for this but this is just going to be done within this exact script and within this scene without accessing the player the player has no idea in this or has no input in this so how are we going to create a uh inner class well we can come down here and we can say class just class not class name but just class and we can name our class we'll name this something like fruit choice right because we're going to choose two different types of fruits and inside of this class, we can create variables that are going to be for this class. So maybe we can have two variables, one for Apple. And Apple can just be equal to a string of Apple. And we can have one for Orange. And Orange is going to be equal to just a string of Orange. Right? Just like that. And we can create functions for our class as well, right? So we can access all of this stuff. And I'm going to show you how to access this. But... We can have variables, functions, all that type of stuff inside of our class, just like it's a class outside. But let me try and put this into a actual usable example. So maybe up here we have a class name, right? So let's say we have a class name and this is our weapon class, right? So maybe this is our weapon class. I'm just gonna tag this out for now. But then we can come down here and we can tag another one out, but I just wanna show you how that we would do this. But then we can say class here. Maybe this would be the SMG, right? So this would be a different type of weapon. Maybe we want different type of, I don't know, damage, right? Or maybe this could be for every single different type of gun that we have in the game or weapon that we have in the game, right? So that is how you would kind of go about that. You would have a separate subclass inside of the main class, which the main class is weapon, but we'll have different subclasses that define different weapons that are all still going to be under the weapon class right so that's kind of how that's going to work but i just want to keep this a little bit more simple and say a fruit choice example and the fruit choice example we can create a variable and this variable will just be get another fruit right right so this get another fruit is going to be well we'll say var fruit is going to be equal to generate random which is going to be a another function that we're going to create that we're gonna end up calling and we're gonna pass through an array and we'll pass through our two variables that we want, right? And then we can say, we can end up returning fruit because when we are outside of this script, we're gonna end up calling this, right? So up here in the process, we're gonna end up calling this function. But for this generate random, we can come down here, we can say function gen random. And what do we wanna pass through? Well, we wanna pass through our fruit uh, choices right and then we can just create a little quick um down here we can create a little quick like choosing a random out of the array so we can say return fruit choices um we can do randy and we can get the fruit choices dot size so however many it is and then we can just minus one just like this and then it'll pick that number in the array so this will pick a random fruit from the array if we play the game you'll see that there should be no errors but nothing is going to end up happening right but that's because we don't call it from anywhere else this is just a class so the fruit choice class well how are we going to access this well we have to go up here to the very top and we're going to have to say var our inner class we can just name it that and we can say our inner class is going to equal to fruit choice dot new just like it was outside in a different node, we're gonna have to access it the exact same way, 
right? And then we can go in here to the process function and we can say something like var our fruit is going to be equal to our inner class dot get another fruit. And then we can just say print whatever our fruit is, right? So if the player wants to choose a fruit from a machine, well, we can call the fruit choice class and we can get whatever our fruit is going to be, right? So we'll just print it over and over and over. We click play and you can kind of see that it's going to spam it down there just like that. But say something like if input dot is action, just press UI accept. This is just going to make it more of like an actual in-game example. So if we click enter, then our player is going to be asking for a fruit. If we click enter, well, we got an orange that time, right? We go over here. We got another orange. We got an orange. We got an apple. We got an orange, orange, or apple, orange, 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 apple. We're getting a lot of oranges, right? So you can always play with that, but it still is it's completely random the way it chooses them. So it's 50 50. We just got lucky with the oranges. But yeah, so that is going to be how you kind of create. This is how a inner class is set up is set up. This is obviously not a good example that you wouldn't use this for a inner class. But the weapon example that I used earlier, where you'll have a weapon main class and then you'll have your sub weapons for all your different types of weapons. That is actually a good example. And that is pretty much how that would be used in a game. That is a real example. But yeah, so this looks very basic and we, we could have done this without creating an inner class, which is completely true. I think this is a good way to kind of understand the format of how classes work and how they are functioning. Classes obviously can get much, much more in depth. This is just a very basic overview of classes and kind of how you create them and how they can be used for simple games. But if you're trying to get more in depth, then I'll have a link to the official Godot documentation for classes in the description below, which is going to be super, super beneficial to go check out. So I recommend going to checking that out as well. But thank you so, so much for watching. I really do hope this video was able to teach you something in some way, help you learn a little bit more, give you some information on anything in Godot that is going to help improve your game dev journey. And until next time, please subscribe, drop a like, push this video to more aspiring game developers so they can also learn to make their own Godot games as well. But thank you so, so much for watching. It really does mean the world. And until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.